Hey YouTube, Tony Brand Light here. Today I'm going to be discussing step files versus STL files. Uh, now, first I should mention this video was sponsored in part by Parts Badger. Uh, so they are a company that does CNCing and they're focused more towards consumer and allowing pretty much any general consumer to have their own parts machined for a pretty minimal cost, especially compared to most other services. So they're really trying to open the door to just about anyone being able to machine parts. Whereas previously, most people either didn't know they could machine or you needed higher orders. So they're really hoping to change that. Now let's get into this. So the reason for this video is because when you're having parts machined, you have to save them as the right format. Now most 3D printer slicing softwares will take STL files. Those are the ones that you're probably most familiar with. And unfortunately those files are pretty bad. So they're basically just a bunch of triangles, I'm sure you've noticed, and lower resolution objects that they can be really rough. It's just a bunch of flat triangles to make them the surface. Now for machining parts, and usually for transferring files between different CADing softwares, you want to save it as something like a step file. Now a step file saves the whole body instead of just the mesh, and not only that, but it allows you to edit those parts later on. It won't give you the same features, like here you can see this part was designed in Inventor, I have all the features I used. You won't see that when you import a step file, but you will be able to edit the part, add to it, and such forth. So first, if you have a part and you want to save it as an STL or a step, this is basically how you do it. Now it's different with just about every program, but they all are fairly similar. So what you want to do is open up your part, obviously, uh, go to your menu, and then save as, or save as, save copy as. If you're using an uh, Autodesk program, you most likely have to do save copy as, otherwise it won't give you the option. But you save as, and then it says save as type, and you just select what type of file you want. Simple as that, you pick the type, and then you hit save, and then you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and open up an STL file of this example part right now. So here it is, and you'll immediately notice all of the triangles. So if you look closely, you can see that on rounded parts, it's just a bunch of flat triangles that make up the curved surface. So this is where you would get your uh, resolution discrepancies. If your model or the model you downloaded online had too low of a resolution, it can really lead to some pretty major flat spots on rounded corners and curves. So now STL files can be edited by some CADing programs, but not all of them. Autodesk Inventor does not allow it, unfortunately, uh, but some, like Google SketchUp, you can edit the mesh, except you have to keep in mind that it's a mesh, not a solid body. So when you edit the mesh and cut stuff out, you'll have to fill in the gaps to make it a solid body once again. SolidWorks is a bit more powerful, and it will allow you to edit STLs quite a bit easier, um, but regardless, editing STLs is not fun, no matter what program you have, because it just really wasn't meant to be done. As you can see, editing any of these triangles would just be a huge pain. Not only that, adding circles can be an issue too because you have these now oversimplified edges with just a bunch of straight lines, so adding circles can cause issues with partial faces being cut off. But anyway, that's why STL should only be used for 3D printing and that's it. There is really no other use for them that I know of. Now let's go ahead and pull this up as a step file. So now as you can see this looks a lot more like the other file we had opened before but if you look on the left here it's just a single feature. Now this is the step file that has been imported. So like I said before it won't save your features but it will allow you to edit them. So as you can see I can click on all these spaces individually. There's no simplification going on here. It is the same curves, the same geometry. It looks exactly the same. Not only that but you can also draw it exactly the same. So again, you won't be able to edit the parameters of previous geometry, but you can add your own on top of it, and that really makes it a lot more powerful file type. So again, this is the file type you're going to want to use if you're having parts machined, because this allows the files to be imported much more easily into the camming software. Uh, I don't have much experience camming, and honestly, you probably cannot even import STL files into camming. But yeah, so that's pretty much the point of this video. So hopefully you guys know a little bit more about STL versus STEP files. I'm not an expert on the subject, so I definitely don't know everything there is to know. Uh, if you guys know more about the file types, feel free to leave the information below. But this was mostly just uh, to get the basic point of both file types across for people who weren't sure of what either of them were or how they were related to each other. Um, and also just to point out that if you're having parts machined by really any service, you should definitely be using step files because they are much, much more accurate and they are going to give you the best results. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, this is brought to you by Parts Badger. I'll be doing quite a few videos with them, so uh, head on below for a link to their website, get a few parts quoted, 
uh, see how affordable it really can be to machine parts. That's really it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll catch you later.